off-road. The name itself sounds nearly as rugged as the sport. Man, machine, pitted against extreme terrain and obstacles, not for the faint of heart. Off-road racing will test everything you have through all the struggles, injuries, and triumphs from the private weekend warriors to the top factory riders to the event promoters. The love of off-road racing is what bonds us all. From the other side of dirt bike racing, this is Off-Road. for the final battle of the 2000 In the United States, GNCC racing is considered the pinnacle of off-road racing. From the rocks and roots of West Virginia to the unforgiving sand whoops of Florida, the GNCCs are a grueling three-hour race through the toughest terrain the East Coast has to offer. Are you ready to go GNCC racing?
The injury started May, towards the end of May 2014. Ended up loading up and going out and riding just kind of like a normal day and I had a new bike and just kind of was breaking it in. Just decided to do a moto and probably you know, four or five laps in to the moto. It was just, uh, just a high speed fourth gear kind of double and my bike ended up shutting off on the face of the jump. I think the impact's what kind of did my wrist in, and once I hit, the bike kicked me and ejected me out, and I put my hands out, so it all happened so fast. I don't know if it was uh, the impact from hitting the landing or from where the bike kicked me, but yeah, after that, you know, life hasn't been the same. It's been uh, a big up and down struggle getting back to, uh, you know, where I want to be. Uh, I can't even really describe the up and down emotional battle I've had, but it's been a long road to recovery. I mean, we're at a year and a half on this whole thing, and you know, it, it's hard to believe it's taken this long to where I feel somewhat normal again. Believe it or not, the injuries kind of made me want to be that much better as a racer and it's kind of rejuvenated me to get back to where I was and you know, really made me appreciate what I had. Accident, I was kind of, I hate to say it, burned out, a little over it, but this whole thing's kind of rejuvenated me and, you know, I'm, I'm going to do whatever I can to try and get back to where I was. I guess people that don't have wrist injuries, you really don't, you take it for granted how much abuse your wrists take and what they do until you kind of don't have that. I believe in my heart I can still win. It's just 
it's not going to come maybe as easy as it was before. In 2012, I uh, made the move to go XC2, and I just wanted to give it a shot, you know? I mean, I knew once you get to 27-ish, everybody kind of starts going downhill, and some people are different, but the normal age of the sport is the high 20s, and I was just gonna go as long as I could. In 2014, I kind of had the opportunity with uh, Randy Hawkins and I just went down there to train and I started working on bikes here and there for him, just helping out the team and he offered me something that I couldn't, you know, I couldn't turn down and I wanted to stay in the industry rather than, you know, go home and work a 40 hour week digging ditches or, or whatever it may be. Um, so when that opportunity came about, I mean, I had to, I had to jump all over it. And, you know, last year was pretty much my first full-time year as being a mechanic, and it was tough. I mean, everyone would go out and train and cycle and do all that, and I, I still was able to do it, but not as much, and it was, I don't know, I, I noticed it when I'd get on the bike, I'd be a little rusty, and uh, it was just, it was tough not knowing, or knowing that I couldn't go race every weekend like I used to, but, you know, now, when I when I ride, it's I have fun with it. There's no there's no pressure. I don't I don't have to go out there and like prove myself anymore or, or whatever. I just I can go out there and have fun. And if I if I hate a track or if I don't want to go to this track, I, I don't have to. I, I can just pick and choose what I want to race. Just like any sport, you know, it's it's hard to it's it, you're, it's a passion. So I mean, you love it, and it's as long as I throw my leg over my motorcycle and I'm having fun. I mean, that's all that's all I care about, and and that's that's what it is about. It's about now. It's just fun. I mean, if I'm not having fun, I'm not going to do it. So you know, I, I think I'll be riding dirt bikes for until I can't ride them anymore because it's just it's just a passion that I love, and it's, it's hard to explain. Uh, every every rider knows. Like the passion you have for the sport is just a, a love you can't you can't really explain, but you know it's I'm gonna do it until it's not fun anymore. I'm Jesse Ansley, I'm from Lack City, Florida. I'm 15 years old and I race the GNCC series and the FTR series. The reason why I race off-road is there's such a chill vibe. Uh, there's like, there's some pressure and stuff like that, but everybody seems to get along. Everybody seems to be like one big family and that's kind of what I want to see in a sport. Whether it's kicking a, kicking a ball around or playing video games or racing dirt bikes, I want to win. I mean, I'm I'm a sore loser, but when I lose, I don't really particularly pout about it or whine about it. Um, I just know what I have to do for next race or next time, and I try to get the job done.
him as to be number one, the, the number one guy in off-road. I feel like I have the greatest equipment and stuff like that, the greatest support behind me to be number one. I just, it's, it's all on me now. There's more to off-road than riders looking to climb the ladder. For some, the goal isn't to become a top racer. Instead, the focus is to enjoy life and the time riding. North Carolina's Dustin Simpson embodies that attitude. Some ride for the sake of the career. Dustin rides for the simple pleasure of it. Enduro racing is the oldest form of off-road racing in the world. It challenges riders with long trail mileage, varying terrain, and an unfamiliar course. By racing against the clock instead of head-to-head, -head, every second counts, every turn counts, and every mistake can be costly. Staying fast and being perfect can be a tough challenge, even for the best riders.
During the time between national events, many racers can be found at local or regional races. For some, these events provide opportunities for extra seat time against the best local talent the area has to offer. For others, it's a way to score some extra cash. In the Southeast, one of the most popular is the Mideast Hair Scramble Series. With track layouts similar to the GNCCs, racers use the series to find the competitive edge needed to win on the national level. A couple years ago, I was just going to school, riding dirt bikes on the weekends, sitting on the couch. And then, I mean, over the past couple years, it's transitioned into a full-on training regimen. I mean, in the gym three days a week, on the road bikes, mountain bikes, whenever I'm not in the gym, and riding dirt bikes every day in between. I mean, it's just a full, it's a lifestyle. got into it more and more and you know, hey, I'm getting kind of good at this. And then I got closer and closer to the front and eventually I just, I never really doubted myself, but I always, you know, kept it in the back of my mind that only a few people get to do this for a living. And I've just worked hard enough to where I, hope I put myself in the position to be able to do this. people get burned out on it really fast and I mean I'm 
I can understand how they do it. If you get too far into it and just over exert yourself, I, I could see how you get tired of it, but for me, that hasn't really been a problem. I just, I love riding dirt bikes. And I mean, I just want, I want to be the best so bad that I don't mind putting in the work on, in the gym and on the bike and on the dirt bike. I mean, it's just, I guess the passion overdrives the ability to get burnt out. Much like the working class heroes of the 80s and 90s, Brad Backen spends his week working construction and racing on weekends. After a weekend of racing, it's back to the job site and back to work on Monday. It wasn't until I came to America that I realized, hey, I can make a living out of this. Because in England, you couldn't make a living out of it. You know, I never had any aspirations to go do world championships or anything like that, purely because we didn't have enough money to go do that. You know, it, it took a lot of money to go do world championships. We didn't have it. America was kind of, um, you, needed, you needed a plane ticket and you needed a bike. And I never forget someone said this, as long as, as, long as you get results, you'll get, get rewarded for your results. And that's how it was back then. On the track, 
I'm not going to give you an inch on the track. I'm not your friend on the track. I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm there to make money and I have bills to pay and, and I'm going to make sure that, that I do everything I can to beat you. But off the track, no, we're cool off the track. And, and it's, that's what these younger kids don't seem to understand. And, and you need that kind of a relationship, I think. I think you need to be friends off the track um, and then on the track. That's business. <laughs> Been, been described as being disrespectful on the track, but like I said, when I'm on the track, that's me doing my job. The, 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 the respect thing, yeah, I have respect for you and I'm not trying to hurt anybody, but at the same time, you know, I'm, I'm there to, to beat you. You know, that, that's what it comes down to. I'm there to beat you. You know, you want to say it's a lifestyle, which is so like cliche, but it is, you know, it's just a whole way of living, really, like just traveling all the time and on the road, and, um, day in and day out, gym, mountain bike, dirt bike, you know, riding, working on bikes. It's just a whole other world. try to race every weekend because it's such good practice just to be on the bike and like you know just racing all the time and that that intensity you know that's the way I make ends meet freaking racing every weekend and the local races is like you know it's the only way I can make my car payment and live really you know afford to go to the nationals I got to go to a local race to be able to afford to go to Jesus City you know? still faster now than I was last year I feel like you know so I think as long as I feel like I'm still improving and there's still you know uh, more speed to gain than why stop you know I don't feel like I've reached my potential so there's um, I don't want to stop short not knowing what what could come you know
that we all put in, you know, all through, through the week. And if you don't have a good result on the weekend, sometimes it's just, you know, it's hard to not get dejected because you put so much work in. But, it, you know, there's, everyone has good days and bad days, you know. So you kind of have to take the good with the bad. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's not like a straight line to success. It's a up and down, up and down, up and down, but it gradually goes up. Traditionally, American Enduro differs greatly from those in Europe. Enter the new kid on the block, the Full Gas Sprint Enduro Series. Inspired by the European style, Full Gas brings a unique format of off-road racing to the States. I went to the ISD in Germany in the following year in Sardinia watching that racing filming for my website and stuff. And it, the style of racing was just something I have, I'd never seen before in my life. And it was just so cool. And, you know, the big grass tracks with all the ribbon and just miles and miles and miles of ribbon and the, and the woods tests that were fast but fun and just, you know, a little bit technical. And, and it, was just the, it was just something I'd never seen before. Finally, after the second year of going there, I convinced my wife, I was like, look, I think this is a really good idea and something that could take off here. And we just, we have to try it, we have to. Full Gas is much more than a name, it's a command. extra effort, the extra mile that we take or go in, in this series, people are noticing it. You know, they're noticing that we use more ribbon than anybody else. They're noticing that we use more stakes and that our trails are groomed and we run fresh stuff and things like that where they want to, they want that. You know, people are tired of riding the same worn out thing over and over and over again. Something that we do back home also, so, um, it's definitely something that I like. Uh, just, just having the fresh tracks. Um, you know, we, we go out there and no one's ridden them before and, and they've all been freshly uh, dozed. That's, that makes it always a lot funner when you've got some fresh stuff to go out and blow out. So uh, it's, a, it's definitely a great series. running these races and the feedback is just so awesome and people are digging it and then watching guys like Caleb and Sipes, guys that have you know raced our races this year go and do so well at the six days and then you know Caleb at the press conference after the first day they're like well, why are you doing so well it's like yeah we have a sprint series now this uh, this isn't second you know this is second nature to me it's not something where I have to figure out how to ride these special tests for two days before I you know pick up the pace so stuff like that I mean that makes, makes all, a lot of the work worthwhile. On a more personal level, um, I've been sitting at a computer for the last 10 years working and just growing increasingly tired of staring at a screen every day. And, you know, getting out here and being outside, working, uh, it's just, maybe it's just that it's different or it's not what I'm used to. I, I'm loving it. So I think those are the, those are the big reasons.
privateer weekend warriors, to the top factory riders, to the event promoters, the love of off-road racing is what bonds us all. From the other side of dirt bike racing, this is off-road.